hi everyone. Uh, today we will talk about how to come from a basic distance search to a complex multi-criteria search. But first, uh, let's talk a little bit about me. So I'm Antoine Lacombe, I'm French, and I'm Python developer since 2009. And I'm currently technical lead at jeloumocampingcar.com, which is a French website. And we have other many websites, uh, like alquilarmiautocaravana.com uh, for Spanish, or irentmymotorhome.com for English, which mean exactly the same, but in different language. <laughs> uh, we have other for Portuguese, Catalonian, and Italian countries. But um, because of my accent, I will not tell you that uh, weird language. Uh, so what we do at jolumocopincar.com, and I will just say GLM for the next time because that's quite long. Uh, so GLM is a private camper hire. Uh, so basically we try to connect camper owners and travelers. So the owner just posts ads on our website and hopes to make money when the camper is not used. And traveler look for a vehicle and just hopes to enjoy holidays by traveling over Europe or French or Spain or whatever. So the search is one of our primary feature in the website because we have to connect the offer and the demand. And to be simple, we are like the Airbnb of campers. So I say today we will talk about search, but I just want to be clear with that. Today we will talk about distance search, uh, ASTAC backends, elastic search, function score, and uh, maybe campers. But we will not talk about how to install elastic search, how to install ASTAC, or how to configure your elastic search indexes, and we will neither talk to, we will don't go deep inside the Elasticsearch implementation. So three years ago, when we write the first version of the GLM website, we had to write the uh, search page and search backend. We don't have a lot of time because uh, we had to write all the website. So we just make something quick for the search and we say, okay, a simple distance search will be okay at least for the next month. <laughs> so we use GeoDjango to do that uh, and like the Google auto-completion in our form. So Google give us a long longitude and latitude. Uh, we create just a geo point from that and ask GeoDjango to compute the distance between that point and the camper uh, parking address and let's sort by distance. And what? <laughs> Searching is hard and maybe harder than you think. And let's see what's happened in the search results. So here is an example of search for Paris using this uh, kind of algorithm. As you can see, the first camper is at two kilometers from Paris, the, the second is three, and the third is four kilometers from Paris. Uh, the first is a van, the second is another van, and the third is a proper camper. You can see that there is no reviews for none of them, and worst, you can see that we don't have any description for the third vehicle. Here, I'm quite confident that we can find better camper for people who want to rent a camper in Paris. Uh, on that kind of slide, you will see that there is blue lines. That blue lines help our um, uh, worker, uh, people who work at GLM, to know how the uh, search engine compute the sort. Here, the score is dependent on distance because we only use sort by distance. So as you can see, the score 
is dependent on distance. <laughs> and the, okay, <laughs> the problem is what do we want? We want to reward owners that deliver a great experience to guests. And the other question is what guests want. So guests want to rent vehicles close to a city because that's important. Uh, but guests also want uh, to rent uh, to a top-notch owner who rents often, have good reviews, answer fast, and probably other uh, things in the future. Guests want an available vehicle. They don't want a vehicle so booked that the owner will never answer or will probably reject him. And guests probably want a vehicle with a lot of pictures because uh, that's more picture you have for something you want to rent, more, a better idea you have of what you will rent. So let's do things better. Uh, at GLM, we choose a stack. In this stack, we have Elasticsearch, which is a fully function functional search engine who provides a completion, highlights, more like this function, full text uh, searching, inducting, facilitating. Uh, it's, I don't know if, uh, who don't know Elasticsearch? Okay. Uh, so yeah, that provides all that kind of things and it's more generally a kind of NoSQL database some people use like that. In the other end, Haystack is a Django app that provides ORM and queries objects similar to the Django ORM on different search engines like Elasticsearch, uh, Solar, Xapian, Woosh, uh, and probably other if you want to implement backends. The idea is I like the Haystack approach who make it easy to start uh, and easy to understand for people who already know Django's because they have the same uh, paradigm like queries, query set, and it's convenient to make the code clear for everyone, even for someone who is, for example, a front-end developer who just take a look to your form or your back-end view, and if that guy already seen how it looks like as a, query, a Django query set, he will exactly know what he's doing. So let's write or rewrite the same function with Haystack and Elasticsearch. So I will not spend time on um, how your data are indexes and um, I will assume that Haystack doc and Elasticsearch doc are clear enough to explicitly say how you index your model. So here is the equifunctional function, uh, the same as before with a point uh, instantiation. Here, the, dis the difference is uh, we will ask Elas uh, Haystack to give us a search query set for a given model, which is an ad. Uh, we ask to compute the distance between the location fields of an ad and the search point and let's order by distance. Yeah, I said we need something better, not just distance search. And uh, if you read carefully the Haystack documentation, you will arrive in the problem. The problem is explicitly written in Haystack documentation and say you cannot specify both distance and lexicographic uh, ordering together. So you can put as many sort by in a stack that you want, except if there is one keyword distance. If there is one distance, a stack will assume that distance is the name of a field and not the name of a compute field. And that not work like that. So after some Googling, reading documentation, and uh, asking myself if is it the right stack, I find something in uh, Elasticsearch named Function Score NDK. Function Score is 
the functions called query is a tool to take in control to your scoring process in Elasticsearch. It's allow you to apply function to each document that match to a main query in order to totally alter, alter or totally replace the original score. So that looks, uh, I mean, probably we need to use that. The problem is function score and neither TK are implemented in A stack. Before going deeper, we just have a look on how Elasticsearch, A stack, and our queries work together. So Elasticsearch, on the right side, <laughs> provide only an HTTP API. So basically, when you write your query set on A stack, a stack have uh, the, the A stack Elasticsearch back and generate an HTTP get, send that to Elasticsearch, Elasticsearch return you a JSON response, and uh, A stack parse that response and transform that in A stack object and put that A stack object in the query set. So it's an important thing for what happened next. I already told uh, just don't see the top I already told you that uh, Elasticsearch work with HTTP API and here is the documentation example of how it look like a function score on top I don't know if you can see this is just a curl get on a given path what's interesting here is you can see that all your data are just put inside a function score object or dictionary or call whatever you want. Um, that function score have a query. The query is probably the original query uh, that you want to search. Maybe it's a full text searching, it's a filter on a given fields or whatever you want to, to filter and to ask uh, Elasticsearch to, to make your search. But important things happen now. The score mode. The score mode is here to tell how Elasticsearch will compute the score that will be used to sort your response. And score mode can have different values. It can be multiply, which is the default one. It can be a sum, it can be average, it can be max mean or first will be the first uh, score generated. Here we will use the sum because the default multiply has a kind of problem. If one of your function that we will see after return a score of zero for an object, whatever other function, whatever what happened, your object will be at the end because uh, you know zero multiplied by something is like so let's use the sum and we will see that will be okay <laughs> uh, next you have the functions and functions are list you can put as many functions as you want function always have the same form for DK functions you define a curve curve are important curve are on the right you have three different kind of curve the ghost, the exponential, and the linear. That, the graphic speak. <laughs> um, here, we will apply a ghost curve on the location field with an origin point at a given geo point with an offset of two kilometers and a scale of three. What does it mean if you see that beautiful graph. That means, okay, <laughs> that means um, imagine a map where you have a central point and a two kilometers offset. All objects inside these two kilometers will have the same score for that function. And uh, all the points outside will start, will see their score decayed. And the scale you see how it will be decayed or how severity it will be. 
So that works for GeoPoint, but that's also work for all fields. The second example is another Gauss curve, but based on the price field. There is a little trick about origin offset and scale. Price, let's assume that price can't be negative. That doesn't mean anything. So origin is set to 50 and offset to 50. That means our circle, which is not really circle for that, but will be between zero and 100. That means all price more expensive than 100 will see their score decayed. And in this example, this example in the uh, documentation is about uh, hotel. And probably the hotel, the less expensive is your hotel, the better will it be, or not maybe better, but more relevant. <laughs> Uh, the last things, and it's quite important, is for each function you can define a weight. Here the price weight is twice bigger than the location. Whatever, it's just uh, that you can mix uh, your curve, your weight, your origin scale and offset as you want. And so what? Because a stack don't provide we that kind of functionality. So let's write a custom Elasticsearch backend for a stack. Actually, that's not just a backend. <laughs> we need to write a something named search engine who embed a custom backend and a custom query. And we need also writing a search, uh, a search query set. Don't be afraid, that will be okay, quick and fun. Let's see how it looks like. Okay, we don't see a top, but don't worry. This is the search query. Search queries are like Django queries. They are lazy and executed only when needed. The idea of this subclass is just to keep track of a DK function list that you see on top in the init. Uh, the build params just is used by the backend to generate that HTTP request sent to Elasticsearch. So if we have a function score or a DK function, we just return them in our search queries. The add DK function will be used by the query set internally to add the new DK functions. And the clone function is here to give the ability to a query like Django to clone itself. That means every time in a stack or in Django, it works the same, you add a new filter or a sort by or an exclude or whatever you add. Every time you add something to your queries, the queries clone itself and return your new queries with that new capability. And here, we every time we clone the query, we just copy the DK function to the new cloned query. Here is the search backend. The search backend are in charge of building the uh, parameters to send to Elasticsearch. Here we have something cool, which is if we don't have DK function, we just fail fast, go away. We don't have to do nothing with that. Just let's hashtag compute uh, the rest for us. Difference is if we have DK function, we will embed our query computed by stack inside a function score uh, code that we see before. Uh, we will put the function, the DK function that we had generate, the query given by Elastic uh, stack, and the score mode as sum. We will go faster. And here is the query set. We, this is how user used the query. Uh, and we will just add a new function to the query set who will be DK. DK will take a function dig, who will be a, D, uh, a DK function. DK function will be only a dictionary. All this code is available on GitHub at this address. But I mean, I will give it to you later. 
And now let's use it. So assuming we want all uh, the vehicle with a park assistance and, GP and GPS nearby a geo point. Let's uh, instantiate uh, our function query set with a model add, filter with park assistance and GPS. Uh, let's compute the distance between our searching point and vehicle point. Now you see how it looks like a DK function. Here we'll apply an exponential curve on the field's name vehicle location with the origin scale offset. And we will put the weight as two because weight is, weight is something important. Not the most important, but it's quite important. But we will have more fun now. And uh, at computation, at indexing time, we add more fields. A field's name picture count, which is the number of picture a vehicle had. And here we will add a ghost curve on picture count with a, an origin of 50, an offset of 40, and a scale to nine. What does it mean? That just mean less picture you have, more DK you will be. <laughs> And we will put that weight at 0 0.5 because that's important, but maybe less important that distance. And let's add this dictionary to the DK search query set. But we need more. Uh, even at the indexing time, we compute something named owner quality rate, which is from 0 to 1, is arbitrarily computed by us and it's uh, computed from acceptation rates of the owner, the number of reviews, the answer time, the number of booking. And we will see that one is the best owner that you can imagine on the earth, and zero is an owner that don't do nothing on our website. So we want to reward good owner, so let's, see, let's say that less your score is lower in the search you will be. And we don't put weight, that means weight one. Then add that on our DK. And now, okay, let's see what happened now. You can see that the first vehicle has description. It's 12 kilometers from Paris, and 12 kilometers, okay, is it's inside our known decayed circle that we define. We have reviews. We have a number of eight pictures and a good owner quality rate. You can see that the score is directly dependent from the distance, the owner quality rate, and the picture count. Because you see that all of them are better for the first than a second. And same for the second, we have reviews and uh, good quality rate pictures. So we can now say that if you want to rent a vehicle from Paris, maybe the first one is will provide you a better holidays or maybe a better experience of our website just by modifying that search query. Uh, okay, so now I'm finished. Thank you for the audience and <laughs> Now if you have any question, I, I will be happy to answer you. Hi, uh, thanks for your Hi. talk. Um, this actually seems like a pretty interesting feature. Did you ask the Haystack developers if they want it back, so if they can, can merge it on their side? Actually, I have a lot of things to do, <laughs> and uh, I just uh, know that there is no functionality like that in Haystack. I didn't see any pull request or things like that existing on the Haystack GitHub. Uh, the code is now available on GitHub that we make if someone is happy to create pull request or ask Haystack team developer to do that. That will be happy. But I think Haystack developer try to keep consistency between all the backend. So if they try to make something for Elasticsearch, they will try to make the same thing for Solar, Zapier, and Woosh. Or, and actually, I not. I didn't read any 
documentation on how, how to do that with other, Elast uh, other search engines. Yeah, just contact them. They, they might be interested. Sorry? Just contact them. They might be interested. Me. <laughs> Thanks. What about uh, performances? Do you compute the result uh, once, or is it uh, computed at, at each charge? Do you have a cache or something? OK, so um, I don't know if you already use Elasticsearch, but Elasticsearch, something's really performance. <laughs> um, adding decay function to our search didn't degrade our search uh, response time. Adding Elasticsearch and ASTAC to our search function make the search faster comparing to the GeoDjango search. So we have more functionality and it's answer faster. I think that's a good compromise. <laughs> Hi, uh, I was just wondering, like you had to explore really deep into Haystack and all the different layers and write a lot of code to actually make that happen. Yeah. Why did you stick with Haystack instead of just going with raw queries for, for Elasticsearch? Actually, we already used Haystack for another part of our website, which is the FAQ. And we use, not really intensively, but we use Haystack to make like highlights, some faceting and things like that. And as I said before, going deeper in Haystack, I really thought that that will be easy to do. Uh, you know. <laughs> Actually, all the code I show you is exactly the code on GitHub. There is no more code to do except that. And the thing is, doing that backend query set and things allow me to add even more things, or even more custom things on our website, uh, which is not open source now, but for example, we develop a uh, more like this functionality or more relevant more like this functionality uh, for campers because normally more like this functionality only work for full text indexing and now more like this work for campers and uh, for for a given campers you have like a pool of campers nearby with the same um, uh, with the same options and the same type or it's like more like this. <laughs> And your search results are quite dependent on the uh, parameters you passed into the decay functions. Yeah. Did Elasticsearch give you any tools to help you to understand uh, where the breaks, where the natural groupings in your data set were? So did Elasticsearch help you to understand that uh, a decay function with this particular set of parameters is going to really neatly chop up your uh, owners, for example? Actually, it's some. If I understand the question, this is something we do manually. That means all that decay function together makes something quite weird. But we do it like it's like playing with cursor. We just uh, get a given city and just test manually to see. Okay, that's not good. This one. It's not really relevant, so maybe we have to decrease by 0 0.1 points that weight. And we just adjust uh, our set of DK to have something that we think that it's acceptable for us. But we have to do that manually. Um, do you allow the users to sort the search results? And if yes, how? <laughs> no. <laughs> the simple question is uh, no. And uh, the, the way we make the, the search is we provide all ads for every search. So if we allow them to sort by price, for example, the thing is we will totally lost our sort by distance. And it's quite not compatible, or at least today, I don't know how to give that functionality to our user. So today we will assume that our algorithm is good enough for user. Maybe not the best to understand for user, but like blog, uh, blog post or uh, you have to make you have to learn that to your to your user. But we consider that okay. <laughs> 
Okay, thank you. Thank you.